fan if you've ever streamed music. <laughs> Alright, pretty obvious everyone has. So, it's pretty evident that music streaming is a popular way people listen to music and access it. Um, you know, we listen to music while doing workouts, in the car, while studying. And so obviously music is a big part of our lives. And um, music streaming is still rapidly growing today. So today I'm going to lay out some history of music streaming, um, some types of modern streaming services, and how music streaming has personally affected me. Uh, so it all started on June 1st, 1999, when a college student named Sean Fanning at Northeastern University had this desire to just access more music. And he wanted to be able to share MP3 files with his friends. And so he developed Napster, which is a this, this program that he made um, and, he, and, he, and like he's our age, like which, which um, sorry, uh, he's our age, which, which, which is super crazy to understand that a guy with, you know, he's just getting started in life, that he creates this huge uh, program. But basically, it was this um, central database where people could access full albums, rare live versions of songs, alternate cuts, and demo versions of their favorite artists. And they could actually share them with their friends. And so he became pretty famous uh, in a matter of a few months and got on the uh, cover of Time Magazine. And it was pretty crazy because this 19 year old kid out of Boston just took off. And Napster marked the beginning of the digital revolution of music. And basically it got to a point where there would be a million songs downloaded every single week. And so obviously it was taking the world by storm. Um, according to Patricia Fusco, the managing editor of ISP Planet, 61% um, of online bandwidth from college servers came directly from MP3 uh, file sharing on Napster. So there was a huge chunk of that um, bandwidth. And obviously this you know, infuriated record labels and artists because, because they were living, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, they were losing profit and revenue and they were just really pissed off about this. And so many record labels filed lawsuits against uh, the company and it eventually got shut down in September 3rd, 2002 because of a bunch of legal issues. But um, at the end of the day, Napster pioneered into the world of music streaming. So 2005, Pandora was created and as described in Will Brewster's 2017 article called Musicology, the History of Music Streaming, um, Pandora created this online service where, uh, the, where music would be recommended based on what the user liked and listened to. And then they could bookmark those artists and discover new ones and have these stations of related songs. And while it wasn't really popular in the moment, it did influence Spotify later on, and we'll um, talk about that later. But Pandora did get its breakthrough in 2013, and it had over 200 million users. So now I want to talk about um, the two main uh, streaming services, so Apple Music and Spotify. So they're very similar, and they have different features that kind of separate them, though, but like similar overall thing. And so there's three different plans you can do. The $10 uh, monthly fee, which is ad-free music for one person, and then the $15 plan, which is the family plan. And so up to six people can be on that family plan, and then the $5 student plan. So very similar in how they operate, um, but research and numbers shows uh, that Spotify is the most successful. So um, according to Spot uh, Spotify's website, from the years 2015 to 2017, uh, the active listeners per month increased at least 5 million every single quarter of the year. And so as, um, so as this chart says, uh, you can really see the, the growth and how fast that happened. And that's the reason why Spotify has been so successful because they've been growing so fast. And um, Spotify has three key elements that kind of separate them from the other ones and show kind of like why people are choosing them. So they have variety, uh, discovery through data, and also collaboration. So first with variety. Um, there's just a library of millions of songs, playlists, podcasts, music videos. So there's just this hub of media on Spotify. And this cool thing they have is um, this section called uh, Genres and Moods. So you can, 
you can pick a playlist or artists or songs based on what you want to listen to. So, you know, the workout playlist. Songs to pump you up, hype you up through your workout, motivate you to keep going. Um, you got your focus playlist. That's stuff to relax your mind, you know, instrumental stuff usually for studying. And so, and then the decades playlist, which is, you know, various songs in certain decades. So it's, it's really cool how they, they organize their music and users just love this, this layout. Um, and then discovery through data. So there are two specific playlists that Spotify has made um, to make it really personal for the user. So there's Discover Weekly and Release Radar. So Discover Weekly is made up of um, 30 new songs every single Monday, and it gets refreshed every week. And essentially what it is is um, a playlist full of songs that you may not know from smaller artists or um, songs related to the music that you listen to. So say you listen to you know, the John Mayer song, there could be a song that's like John Mayer, but maybe a smaller artist. And so it's a way to kind of discover new music. And then uh, release radar is similar, but it's a collaboration of all the new songs that come out either that Friday or in the past few days. And it's a cool way to kind of hear the new songs right when they come out. And so. Both of these posts have helped me, and I'm sure many others, uh, discover new music almost every single day. And then the last thing they have is a collaboration. So Spotify has given users the ability to make group playlists. So let's say I make a playlist, and then Justin, Cade, Katie can all add songs to it, and we're all co-creators of that playlist. And so we can all see who, who adds what. And so it creates this community aspect that's really unique. Um, According to Simon Lee, the founder and CEO of Plants Networks, Spotify has turned themselves into a one-stop shop for all your music streaming wants and needs. Uh, pretty, pretty funny quote how he said that, but it's so true how Spotify just offers so much and it's why people are choosing it. Um, now Spotify has brought in my taste in music personally. Um, before Spotify, I was using iTunes and you know, you're, you're so limited to like buying you know, one, one song or one album and it just got so expensive and so Spotify is really cool because you just pay 10 bucks a month and you get to um, have access to all these songs, music videos, podcasts, whatever, and, and just like whatever you want. And so I've actually found some of my favorite bands through Spotify, which I never thought would be possible, but um, my favorite bands, uh, Coin, for example, and Lemony, they're actually, I found them through Spotify, which is pretty cool, and now they're pretty big. So. Music streaming has really, uh, uh, has really revolutionized music for me and so many others. And so, according to the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, 38% of the global music industry uh, total revenue came from music streaming. And so, um, sorry, whatever. Um, but anyways, it'll be interesting to see how this number changes because 38% is the biggest chunk of the revenue, and that's from music streaming. So. It'll be cool to see how that number changes over time and what happens with music streaming. Thank you.